Storing documents in SharePoint is surprisingly confusing because you can put them in a folder or a document library or a document set and you don't want to be saying later, oh, we should have gone with this other one because it's way better. Let's explore the limitations so you can make the right decision. For this example, let's pretend we're building an employee onboarding system. Makers that are new to SharePoint would come in here and make a new document library. In this case, I called it onboarding. They'd start putting documents in here. They would add all the employees, drug tests, resumes, and quickly start to see that this is a mess. So they're like, I know, I'll come up here and use folders. So they put the person's name, create that, and then take everyone's documents and put them in the right folders. And let's say we need to store the hiring status of all these people. As soon as we add a column, things get a little weird. If I throw in a single document into here, if I click the three dots and go to the details of it, I see all the columns and then maybe here I could add some hiring status if I want. But if I go to a folder and then I go here and hit details, I'm already not able to see anything. But I guess I can come over here and edit grid and here I can add the statuses. And it's like, you know, this is good enough. But then something weird happens. I click into one of these records, hiring status is gone. With folders, you can inherit the properties or the values of the column. And then you think, all right, I need to store this background check passed and then were their documents submitted on time? But you know, this hiring status, I don't actually want to see this, so I'm gonna hide it. Great, it's gone. I put some values here. And then if I go back to the parent level, wait, that hiring status column is also gone here. Plus it added these columns, but it kept the values blank. I hope you're starting to see how limited folders are. While we're here, some other weird things that tend to happen is if you mix folders with documents, like maybe the resumes all start out here before a folder gets created. If I try to do things like alphabetize these, it always groups the folders together and then the documents come after. Maybe that's the behavior you want, but most people, when you alphabetize, you expect them all to be in alphabetical order. And one more problem with folders is it's really tempting once you start making them to not be able to stop and you make folders within folders within folders. It's not only confusing, could lead to duplicate documents, but most importantly, lead to this nasty message one day that says the file or folder name is too long. Andrew Haas was the original person who pointed this out. Makers eventually realized this, so then they switched to a completely different structure where they just make a document library and they keep it flat all the documents here and if i really want to group all of these i can come over here and make a new view and in the view they can open up group by and then they can group by a column and the result is like this which is kind of like folders this works great the only weird thing is if i want to share something it works on one document at a time but if i try to select multiple documents i lose my share ability i originally learned this from sylvie latzerno at i'm mbii solutions Having one flat library like this and using this group by to act as a folder is fine, except what if you want child folders? For instance, what if the drug test should all go in their own folder for each person? Well, now you probably have to make a folder. And we already know all the issues with folders. There's really one answer here that solves all your problems. If you open up settings and navigate down to site contents, and then you scroll down to an area that says site collection features, there is a ridiculously undocumented perfect solution called document sets. And you just need to activate them. And then if we head back and scroll into site content types, and in here, if you click on create content type, you give it a name like employee onboarding doc set, and then down here, here you choose document set content types and click create and in here add whatever columns you want in my case i want to store the employee's name their state and gender i have a brand new document library here called onboarding doc set and to add my document set to it i'm going to come up here into settings click on library settings and under advanced settings make sure you press this button allow management of content types and then you could scroll down here to content types and add from existing and select your content type. But we're not done yet. If we click on employee onboarding and we scroll down to document set settings, we get some superpowers. For instance, we can have a document appear in this document set every time it's created. So I just added this Word document called onboarding checklist. And this is the moneymaker here. I can choose which columns are gonna sync 
from the doc set down to the documents. So I'm gonna choose a uh, full name, gender, state, province. So now when I come in here and hit new, I got this new icon called employee onboarding. I'm gonna click that. And here I populate the columns. Maybe I name all of the folders for the position we're hiring for. And then I just click save. And now we're inside the document set. And if you're wondering what this document is, this is that template I told it to make. So every time it makes a doc set, it adds this file. If I open this file, here's some template that the HR person has to fill out for every new position. But here's where things start getting cool. If I go to add columns and then I choose the columns I made when I created this doc set, look at this. They're automatically populated because these values came from the parent level. But one of my favorite features is I have all my columns here, but these are all the columns I care about high level. When I click into here, let's say I want to see different columns here. So I'm going to change these. So hide some of these. These are the columns we want to see inside of the doc set or folder. So I'm going to save these and click save. So here's my inside doc set view. But when I go back, it reverts me to all documents. And when I click inside, I'm stuck in the all documents view. If I hop here to library settings inside of our document set settings, our select view, we can change it from all documents to inside the doc set. Now it's going to change. So at the high level doc set level, I see this. But when I click in, I see different columns. How great is that? Oh, and that sorting thing, watch this. If I shift them up, yep, the doc sets being mixed with other regular documents are still getting sorted properly. What's also interesting is if you're inside a doc set, you don't have the option to create a doc set anymore, but you can take a doc set and drag it inside of one. And then when you click inside of it, there will be the child doc. It's probably why people like the SharePoint maven say, don't you dare say anything negative about document sets because they're so terrific. By the way, Greg Zelfond has some of the best SharePoint content I've seen. Also, you'll notice here, if you press the three dots, you have version history. So you can see the history of this document set something that you definitely don't have with folders. Here's a handy guide to use when you're trying to make this decision of how to store documents in SharePoint. Now, if you want to become really good at SharePoint, I'm not your guide. I'm all about solutions architecture and how all the power platform tools connect together. But if you're looking for a SharePoint people, you should go follow all of these people and check out their amazing content.